not impressioning, then we have a second channel that you can move to if you want to. Okay, so DM me if you if somebody needs me in the different channel, I'll be here. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, okay, well, um, this is I'm gonna the NATO Mersey is a really interesting lock. At least it is is it is to me. Um, this picture here has got bits of them strewn all over the place, and um, here hopefully you can see uh, a couple of them. Um, most people don't know anything about these at all, really, I guess. Um, the, a lot of people aren't aware they come in, in two flavours, it's a 10 lever version of 14. And um, really, they have a, or they had, a very specific use. They were used to lock up um, secret and uh, I think including top secret, but not the highest secret, um, kind of information for NATO. I mean, that's what these things uh, exist for. So they're for security agencies and, and the like. And in a lot of cases, this would be built into a, um, a filing cabinet, for example, and uh, this key would be locked away in a little key safe behind a mark for Manifoil. In fact, the mounting of these things is really interesting. Um, I've put most of it away, but they're um, quite often mounted like this. So the metal plate that you see there is um, is usually attached to a kind of a, a heavy metal bar uh, across the front of your filing cabinet or in your safe or similar. And that is kind of held off of that metal plate by that glass plate and the glass plate is a brew locker. So these things are designed um, to really resist all kinds of uh, attack by the usual vectors. So force. I mean, nobody, uh, I have to say, nobody in their right mind would try and pick one of these things under under any kind of time constraints whatsoever. Um, so we'll we'll get into that, that side of things uh, a little bit later. Um, and hopefully as we go, I'll talk about some of the variations and some of the other bits and pieces. Um, what I should probably do, given the audience, um, I should probably do a very rapid run through some lever lock stuff. Uh, shout at me, you know, do interrupt me, do shout at me if I'm uh, patronizing you or not, um, or whatever. Just communicate, let me know to speed up or slow down. But this is the cheapest, nastiest uh, two lever lever lock that I could find in order to take apart very quickly just to make sure that you understand because um, I want you when I take one of the Merseys apart to appreciate how friggin difficult it is so um, this here is uh, one lever I've taken the other one out there's a couple of bits and pieces this little area here where the key would interact so the key would come in through here and would pull on the bolt that's called the talon um, this is obviously our lever and this is this little thing here is called a stump and so what you're doing is you're pushing your lever upwards or that's what the key does allowing your stump um, to go past or to go through a gate or in this particular case past some obstructions and this works for kind of all sorts of stuff so i've got a whole load here like this is the venerable um chub uh, 114 i think and so this has got a couple of extra features which you can see to try and raise the security so it has as well as a true gate it's got a little false gate here and you can see the stump has got like a cutout in it and that cutout really locks in to that false gate these are really weird actually because um uh, the more you pick these things the more you wear those two the stump and the the gate together and the harder it gets to pick which is kind of a i don't know it's kind of nice it's kind of interesting so stuff like that um, there's also some other bits and pieces. Doesn't really matter what it looks like. So this is another one from Leg. This is actually a five lever job, and the levers here slide, which is slightly unusual mechanism rather than pivot. Um, but it doesn't doesn't terribly matter. The core principles are the same. You're trying to pass a stump attached to the bolt through a gate and avoid the false gates. Okay, so that's that lot out of the way. Uh, let's show you these. Um, unless you've got any particular preference, I'm going to start by talking about uh, this one, which is the 10 lever. Um, I actually think this is slightly harder um, in terms of picking. I think it's slightly more resistant. Uh, it's the one I probably know a little bit more about the history of, which I want to talk about a little bit. Um, so I got really interested in these essentially because I thought they were unpickable. And so that annoys me. 
um, as I'm sure it annoys you too. And so I thought, well, that can't possibly be true. So I thought I'd better dig in. And so I did what everybody else does when you're investigating things. I got as many as I could beg, buy, borrow or steal off of people. And you can see one of these is a cutaway, which is the top right. And you can see some of the other differences. So the two on the right are much older. They're from the um, very early 70s. The cutaway is from about 72. And then 76 is the bottom right hand one. There's a couple of little differences. If you're incredibly eagle eyed, you'll see that the bolt pattern changes into those two on the left, which are um, kind of 96. And the one that I've got in my hand here, which I think is, I don't know, this one's 75. I've got one from 2004 and one from 2006. So these things are in active use for a very, very long time indeed. Um, and obviously they've gone through some changes. I'll talk about some of these in a, in a minute. Um, most of these changes are kind of cosmetic. So you can see there's a couple of little things and you might see that the bolt pattern changes. Um, mostly cosmetic, but there's a couple of interesting tweaks to the security in there, which I think are kind of, uh, kind of fun to talk about. Um, in particular, the, the one that's down here on the bottom right is the one I'm going to show you in a minute. And so that's got a, a whole uh, host of interesting little, interesting little bits and pieces. We might hop back to this in uh, in a sec, but let's let's have a look. Okay, so um, they're quite uh, these things are quite fragile in a way. They're quite interesting. Um, they were made um, to be shipped separately from the key and then installed kind of with the key then in, in place. Um, because one of the interesting things is you can't get in this, you can't take it apart unless you've got the key because, he says, oops, oh, it would appear I can't even get in this one with the key today. Um, there's a little interlocking part of the case which then locks in, into the bolt. There we go. And you can see, even having practiced that a lot to try and make it slick for you this evening, it's still a bit of a pain. So this thing here locks into this little bit of the bolt. And I think straight away that starts to tell you that the people designing this kind of really meant business. There's no way to non-destructively take the case off and therefore there's no way to see the bitting. There's no way to see uh, any of the details of the lock without... Um, yeah, without either the key, i.e. Uh, appropriate access, or stripping the thing down to its component parts. Most of the gaps and the holes here, so all of these things, these are for mounting, um, pretty standard kind of NATO idea that you double the number of mounting points you might actually need. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces. This is a little steel plate, which is uh, ideally, um, I guess, to help a little bit of anti-drill. Although, if you're drilling this, if you think about how this thing was mounted, you have drilled through several layers of steel plate and then through a glass um, plate, so you've already shattered it. It's already uh, essentially locked down your cabinet or whatever you're trying to get into, um, and you've got no chance. So, on the face of it, as you probably saw from the key, this um, already looks a bit different looks a bit special and if I just zip the cover off you can see that it does look a bit different. Um, let's pull back our venerable, so this is the, the kind of British standard lever lock. There's uh, five little levers. This thing here is called a curtain and it just helps to protect the, um, the levers from being picked. It protects them from any interference. Um, that's a quite a nice security feature. Um, that's what a kind of standard British um, lever lock looks like. And this is essentially two of them plus a bit. So there's a little curtain here. This is a really late one and so this has got some really interesting um, funky features. This little bolt here is like a whole secondary locking mechanism and I didn't know that this existed until this lock landed um, in the, through the post. And I've never seen this on others, and I know that the 14 lever, which shares the bolt pattern, doesn't have this. So this is quite interesting. 
essentially this is the curtain um, and so when your key is in the lock your key sits in the curtain like that and as you turn the curtain this little ramp lifts this pin and this pin then um, detect or then uh, either either does when it's engaged or doesn't doesn't lock the back plate of the lock to the bolt so you can't even tension this thing you can't tension it with the bolt or anything else until you've turned the curtain and that was that's quite interesting that actually foiled the first um, my first approach at picking these things most of them look pretty much like this and you can see a couple of things you can see that we've got some false gates and that they're very small hopefully you can see that the stump has got a um, you know it's got a little carved out section in it and so even if it were just these kind of two sets of levers this would be a pretty formidable piece of security however the kind of the trick to these and the reason why they are such an absolute pig and nightmare to pick is actually a little easier to show you if I disassemble this and I show you um, what's going on inside so these have got a secondary mechanism uh, you have to excuse the it's got some silicon lube on it I was trying to pick it again earlier today um, I'm not very sure I haven't I haven't touched it for a little while and uh, it's all gone to pot so this is really interesting and it's the reason why these are so cool and it's this mechanism here so in normal use let's pop the key in in normal use as you turn the key it would lift those levers into the right place he says come on it would lift those into the right place and then those stumps would pass through the correct gates okay something like that um, what you m will see in most of these locks, most locks in general, like this one, is that the point at which the lever pivots, so that lever pivot point there, that's completely fixed. In this lock, this is attached to the back plate. In this thing, it isn't, and that's really interesting and makes it, as I say, an absolute uh, terror to try and to try and pick this one's a little bit stiff there okay i'm going to take one more lever off so you can see what's going on here so this is the pivot for the levers and um, that pivot is set into this little um i don't even know what they're i don't have a right name for it but this little part of the blocking mechanism and you can see that this part of the blocking mechanism itself pivots around this point and so as um, if the bolt it retracts um, without the stump being able to pass through the correct gates then what happens is this locking mechanism um, connects to the bolt itself and that blocks the bolt from being withdrawn so this mechanism is really clever in that it limits your ability to even tension the lock so let's have a little look at that if i tension the bolt you can see that the stump pushes on the lever the lever pushes on the pivot pivot causes this thing to move and this thing then interacts very strongly there with the bolt and the same is true on this side um, and so that's a complete nightmare um, and uh, it really adds an enormous level of, of security really to these things um, and what you have to you know what you have to do when you're picking is to try somehow to get past this now there's a number of ways of doing that but I'll come on to that in uh, just a minute this is probably or maybe the right time to mention the kind of history a little bit more of the history or the evolution of these things been a really interesting thing to chart I'm um, in trying to learn 
not more about them. Um, this is my little back plate uh, photo here, but I'm just focusing your attention on one little part of it. The little bit that you see there, I should just drop back to the top down for just a second. Little bit that you see there, this bit here, is the bit we're going to focus on. That bit there is the pivot for the lever. And so that has to be free to move in order to allow that blocking mechanism to work. Um, the first of the locks that are picked, um, or the, the first attempt at having a go at these, is the oldest one, which is in that bottom left hand corner. And you can see that those lever pivots are actually sliding in a little uh, recessed kind of hole. And that limits the movement of that pivot and actually gets in the way of that blocking mechanism, which we've later found to be so fantastically um, effective. And then as you move across from left to right, you can see that in um, about 70 to 72, 73, I suppose, they changed to a circular thing. And then finally to that kind of square notch. As yet, I've no idea why you go through all of the effort to make that a square hole and not just drill around on a little bit um, larger. And that's really annoying to me that I haven't been able to figure that out yet. So if anyone's got any ideas, I'm really keen to, to hear them. Uh, you can also see in that picture that that little extra kind of hole, the little the curtain actuated bolt that I was talking about appears. And um, rather interestingly, that it's only the right hand one that has it fitted. So that one in from the right must be some transitional thing because I got all, all of these essentially straight from the MOD uh, one way or another. Um, that's the Ministry of Defence in the UK here. Um, and interestingly, that didn't have it. So either it's been uh, dropped, you know, it's been uh, removed in service or, or something like that, or there's some transitional element. And that's that's kind of interesting. Um, now, whilst we've got this thing more or less apart, I should show you just how serious um, the whole thing is. So we've already got fantastic pick resistance. We have got absolutely fantastic um, way of mounting this thing so it's, it's safe from conventional kind of attacks. And we've also got, he says, trying to pull this thing apart, a, um, a bolt which is laminated. So it's uh, this section here is steel, two layers of brass and a thick layer of brass. And then this section here is lead. And so this is also proof against radiological attacks. And one of my favourite little features, because it's so utterly over the top and unnecessary, is, I don't know if you can see here, the lead is relieved. So it's slightly thinned. And those fins are actually slightly chaotically kind of distorted, which all helps to mask any radiological attempt at working out what the bitting of this thing was. So, you know, there's um, just about everything you could think of, which is one of the reasons I, I am so keen on this as a, as a thing. It's a really lovely project. And, uh, yeah, and they've gone, to sort of, they've gone all out on it, I suppose. So that's the 10 lever. Um, there's not a huge amount more to be said from it. We've thoroughly taken it apart. Let's have a look at our 14 lever. Um, versions is very much same, fairly similar. Um, let's yeah, let's pull that apart. And let's start having a look at the keys. So you can see the key works on the same blank. Um, the there are a whole uh, a whole number of different kind of variations on this. The bow is ever so slightly different. Um, you may find in the wild a thing which looks very much like a makeup key, and that's a legitimate key. Um, I'm just wondering if I've actually got a picture of one. Not sure that I have. Um, so for a short time, these existed as like a makeup key, because of course each one of these locks has got its own booting. There aren't any mastered, as to my knowledge, and there's only a couple of keys per lock, um, and so essentially. This thing is bespoke to this thing. Um, 
So uh, they were my makeup keys. Before that, they were plastic. Um, and they were the same plastic as this, which shatters really easily. So again, if you've got one of these, and I really recommend getting one, don't drop it or um, this section here will shatter. And in fact, if you get an early one, you'll find that this is a complete circle of plastic. And uh, essentially, they that so many of them broke during servicing that they ended up just reducing it, uh, just reducing it to that. So that's that plastic section, which is the main body then. Um, so as I say, coming back to the keys, you can see they're essentially the same. There's not a huge amount of difference. Um, they're quite quite neat. Obviously, they're a little bit thinner. Um, they're going to be susceptible to a bit more wear. Um, there are a couple of other differences. We'll have a look. Uh, as we go. But before I take this one apart too much, I thought it might be nice if I just spin this open and I'll pop a clear, uh, clear plastic cover on the back just to hold everything together. And we can actually have a look at this and see it kind of working. Um, can't resist mentioning, look, 2004 so this you know we're still pretty recent um high security a couple of interesting things a couple of little detents um one of the most annoying things is trying to put this back in the right place putting it into that little relieved groove and then reassembling the lock and so at some point they finally got around to doing something about it but you'll see this is a little bit different there's no ramp there's no little pin like this holding the bolt to the back plate um, that is a surprisingly significant thing that i'll come on to if you have time or if you're interested um or else we go key lock um lifts everything into place only then does it start the tension uh, the lock does it start to move the bolt okay if, if of course given what we know about these things if this key put any tension load on this bolt then it would simply enable this locking device and that would be that um this uh, 14 version has got exactly the same um kind of internal structure to the bolt you get a nasty reflection there let me take that off um to the bolt as a lot of others but you see there's a couple of other things um the 10 lever has got a much larger uh, we call this the belly of the lever and the 14 lever is much reduced this is an attempt at um, security believe it or not so it is an attempt to help to stop uh, an attack called scoping or that you'd think of by putting an endoscope down through the uh, through the keyhole you can see the bitting approximately by the amount of wear on the levers so if you think about it if you think this if this was a high lift which it's sort of mid to high this is going to have more wear on here over a longer section than if it was a very low lift okay and so that's um a quite indicative of of kind of the bitting so you can scope these things so this is an attempt to prevent that which is reasonably effective it's quite a classic thing to do um there's a couple of other changes um one of the attacks that I'll talk about if you would like um, is uh, kind of foiled, at least in part, or made easier, I haven't decided. Um, it's mostly foiled by this. This is these two things. This is a spring on the bolt. And so the bolt is actively kind of snaps forward or snaps back. These are essentially the spring is acting a little like a sprung over center catch, in case you know what that is. Um, and so that's quite quite neat itself. Okay. Um, what I should probably uh, talk about at some point is um, attacking these things because I'm guessing that is of uh, reasonable interest as there's not a lot of people that publicly attack these. And, um, it's worth pointing out that you can get in these things. Um, lots of people have been doing this for a very long time. I know that there's um, there's several tools that you can use to get into the into um, locks like Mersey locks. Uh, I don't really have time to discuss um, 
things like pin and cam mechanisms uh, right now, I don't think. Uh, I'm looking across at the time. I don't entirely have time to talk about pin and cam, but there is a um, a security firm that's making a pin and cam to open these things. You can still pick them using a bore scope um, and a, a couple of clever things. Um, there is a uh, a couple of really low tech uh, approaches. So let me show you one of those. This is my picking wire for Merseys. I know it looks quite hilarious, but there you go. If you have engaged the blocker in the 14 lever, this um, reduced belly actually works against you because you can hook a, a wire in behind and lift the lever upwards and forwards. So you can actually use this to exert forward force on the bolt and thereby help to control your tension fore and aft and thereby um, help to kind of ride the little kind of that little gap between tensioning the bolt and thereby getting some friction between your stump and your lever and over tensioning it and causing it to lock up solid. That's really difficult for me to show you, um, but let me see if I can do. So just a tiny bit of tension and that thing's locked up. But it, there is a little bit of a point here. I'm squeezing the bolt. There's a little bit where you can just get a little bit of tension on um, before that engages. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the neat little things you can do with this. Um, there's a couple of others. I'm slightly wishing I hadn't taken that entirely so apart. So I'll have to show you on here. Um, the standard way of attacking um, lever locks is to have some form of, of you know, cut down key or other tensioner and some form of picking wire. Uh, this is, believe it or not, all you need, um, as well as something to hold it. So let's have a quick look and see if I can zoom out a bit. We'll see if I can get this in here in a suitable fashion. Use a one sec. Okay. So focus. Come on. Okay. Excellent. So you can see this just about. I think that the bit that of the key which I'm using to tension bolt. Um, I can get that in there and I can start putting some tension on the bolt if I want. And you can see straight away everything is moving around. And you can see here the second I start to put any tension on, the stumps here are starting to interact with the levers. As soon as they do that, if I just put a little bit more on, oops, you'll see that those blockers come into play. You might realise, although it took me an alarmingly long time to, to get this far, that if I move, rotate that key around uh, to the in the bolt, I can actually put then push, and by pushing it on it, by pushing the key in, I'm pushing the end of the key against all of these, and so I'm able to reduce the problem enormously because these are now essentially bound or reasonably bound levers. Um, and so that way you can get a long way towards picking the thing before you even have to tension it, before you have to worry about the tensioner. Once you've got one side done, actually, um, the other, the, you can get it into a pick state where uh, this stump sits in the gates and allows you to interact with this side. They're quite a dynamic system from a picking perspective. So as you pick each one, the interaction between the stump and the levers changes, and therefore the interaction between the levers and this whole locking mechanism changes. So essentially, the more pressure you put on this, the more uh, strongly that section there will engage. And so the other trick to this, and it's very much more effective, I suppose, uh, on the older models or any model that's had a lot of wear is to again use a fat, uh, this key and you can see that it's um, kind of cut short uh, on purpose. Use this key to put pressure on the bolt sideways. It's very hard to show you 
but maybe you can see on there that that bolt is actually skewing as I push the key this way the bolt is skewing slightly to the left and what you may see is happening here is that this bolt this stump here is moving downwards and this stump here is moving ever so slightly upwards and so that allows you to control a little bit which a stack of levers binds first, which stack of levers is interacting more strongly with the stump and therefore with the locking mechanism. And that gives you a little bit of control. And without that control, um, I think these are essentially unpickable um, or, or, you know, by any, any means, which isn't pin and cam or any of those kind of things. Uh, pickable in my definition, I suppose, is using essentially uh, a bent bit of wire and, an old, and a filed down key in order to try and get into our security things. OK, so let me just show you that. Um, and let's just see that in this. This is that pen lever that I've taken apart. And so hopefully I can show you that. Um, actually, there's a reasonable amount, according to the guide, uh, the guides anyway, there's a reasonable amount of play in that bolt. Now it's exaggerated now because of this, the lack of this plastic part, but this plastic part still has a tolerance. And so you can still move the bolt back and forth and thereby affect which of these stumps interacts most, more or less strongly uh, with the levers. Okay. Um, so that's more or less a tour of these um, of the Mercy locks. And I feel like I've rattled through it and I'm cheating you over a couple of bits and pieces. Um, I did want to uh, point out a couple of things. Um, this is the so I was slightly obsessed by these. I heard about the uh, the lock pretty well, and I got into lock sport uh, quite a few years ago. Um, and this is the the first time I managed to get an open. Yes, it's a cutaway, but I was still completely made up um, because, as I'm sure you will realise if you've done anything like this, the hours and hours and hours of sitting staring at the same thing, um, doing the same motions and getting nowhere is um, is ridiculous. Um, so this helps. Okay, this helps a lot. Um, the transparent backs, cutaway backs um, but essentially I think that without going to as I say pen and cam or similar this is only ever going to be a serious challenge um, that a few recreational pickers are going to have a go at because what you essentially have to do is to learn the lock learn the individual lock learn the individual bitting um, recreate a series of, of movements in order to get the the thing open and I think that's true very much for uh, both the 10 and the uh, 14. I suppose I should do a couple of other things whilst I'm here. I should probably uh, dig one of these out, show you um, a couple of things like those full skates a little bit more clearly. And we should probably just offer up a lever from the 10 and a lever from the 14. You can see. Um, what a big difference there is in the in the depth of those levers. Um, so that's more or less it. Uh, please, please fire away with any questions or comments. I've got another couple of lever toys here, which I wanted to kind of compare this to, I suppose. And again, as part of, I'm on a mini mission at the moment to educate the world in levers. Uh, this thing here is kind of Chubb's uh, non-military flagship. For many years, this is uh, the 110 detainer with a really interesting mechanism as you turn the curtain. Um, let's, well, let's show you, shall we? Pop that in there. As uh, so you turn the curtain, you're then um, in a very similar vein, and you can see the, uh, the there's a, a kind of an industrial manufacturing link between these, and you can see that there's an interesting parallel here of lifting these things to height before then triggering a mechanism to interact with them um, and so as a kind of conceptual bit of design uh, I guess or a conceptual approach to making a lever lock 
there's a lot of a surprising amount of similarity between the two and this thing is completely brutal um, and it's the reason this is brutal is because of that um, difficulty in interacting with it um, this thing here is brutal for another reason this is a chub this is another chub this is a detector um, and this has got some interesting features which you know if combined if this feature is combined with this one it would actually make it less secure uh, weirdly this has a little feature whereby if you lift any of these levers too high they push on this pin and if this pin is attached to the lever at the back that goes too high and a little spring holds it in place and so this is now locked you can't get in um, it, nothing can happen with this it's essentially jammed up until the, the person with the correct key comes along and if you try to unlock it it doesn't work but if you then try and re-lock it then you can actually push the bolt forwards a little bit and that will disengage that spring and then it's un then it's uh, unlockable again and i said uh, that this mechanism which lots of people rave about or think must be brilliant this actually decreases security because if you put this into that state and then pick the rest of it then you know where the true gates are because you can push all of these levers if you kind of pick this in reverse you can push all these levers so that this stump sits in this gate the reset gate and you can do that without having to interact with any false gates or anything else and so you can straight away decode the uh, bitting heights of it so really clever really good major weakness that was probably not seen in the original thing and so i suppose that kind of brings me more or less full circle to this and i said that i would address this bit um, more or less at the end um, one of my first uh, approaches to attacking this as i'm sure it would be for just about anyone else is to start off by tensioning it and seeing what happens the first time i had a go at this one <clears throat> not knowing it had this bolt in it i was tensioning the lock with absolutely nothing happening and no idea why nothing was happening because i just didn't didn't know that actually that bolt was pinned to the back plate like that and the curtain i can show you that on this one the curtain sits in such a way that um you can rotate the curtain in this lock without um affecting the bolt and without affecting the um, the levers so unlike uh, many locks unlike these things here so going back to my good old kind of normal bog standard in english house lock if i rotate this curtain this curtain is going to pick up on the bolt and that will cause this bolt to be thrown this curtain is kind of doesn't really do anything other than than uh, helping to prevent a bit of key wear at the back it it really doesn't doesn't do a lot and that in itself oddly is a little bit unusual and therefore quite hard to deal with and a little bit hard to get your head around so um at possibly a rattle uh breakneck speed that is the nato mersey uh, 14 lever and the 10 lever i hope it's been mildly interesting at least uh, please please fire any questions that you have at me i'm all yours So if someone was relatively new to their lever lock game, yep. uh, you know, five years from now when, when I'm feeling comfortable, will, will these even be available for me to find or can I hunt one down now and, and, then, and then, you know, dust it off the shelf at a later date? Um, um, I, uh, let me see, is Ter Terragene still uh, kicking about? Is yeah, I'm here. Um, as a second opinion, how miserably horrible are these things to pick? Uh, so uh, the way I actually picked mine is that I um, used a bent syringe with super glue, and I only have the ten lever one. And I put the super glue where the stumps move, and so that stops the left stump from moving. And in my particular case, that's enough to pick it. So I don't think that they're terribly hard. Of course, they do have the C stumps, and it's a, it's a ten lever lock, but I, I think they're alright. If you get okay. the uh, the syringe going, okay. So in that case, in that case, probably uh, perfect for maybe two or three years time. 
in if you're going to get started on levers and as to finding them um they pop up on ebay uh from time to time essentially uh this was probably one of the last um manufactured um certainly almost the last uh kind of year of um of use or the last few years of use this one's actually got a sticker on it for 2004 whereas every other one i've got is engraved so i suspect that this is you know we've got a load of stock on the shelf all right let's stick 2004 on it and then and then roll it out uh so at the moment every few weeks i suppose um there's another uh, another load of filing cabinets gets bought up and um gets scrapped for parts and these things pop up on on ebay uh the 14 ones are really not cheap at all um they're about 100 and about 150 quid, I suppose, most of the time. Um, a 10 lever you can pick up for about a third of that if you're a bit careful or lucky. But again, um, if somebody doesn't know what they have, then uh, I have bought these annoyingly. I've bought these for other people for 50 to 60 quid uh, a time, and they, they sort of tick around. Um, but there's never going to be millions and millions of them because the only real customers were um, the Ministry of of defense I hope that answers your question did you say that you bought it for 50 quid uh yes i bought it for 200 quid oh my god yeah but it'll make you even more sick if i tell you that i bought a whole load of the four of the tens without realizing what they were for even less um but that was another story i should have should have kept them uh yeah any more questions anything else Yeah, uh, the um, thing with the Scorpion, I was just wondering, is that why uh, a lot of the chub door locks and stuff, uh, the belly of the levers are all odd heights? Uh, yes, that's absolutely it, is it. And um, where's my leg? There it is. Um, one of the things, oh, it's actually very difficult to show you, but these, uh, let me see if I can do this in a reason, in a way, reasonable way. I don't know if it's very clear but these um, bellies are different radii so the radius is slightly different in each of these and again that's part of stopping people from just looking in and, and working out by looking at the where um, what the bitting is so yeah you're spot on cool i didn't know that uh, as well like you, you were talking about there uh, how difficult they are to do at the mercy lock uh, to do uh, destructive entry because of the uh, glass plate in the way yeah. I was just wondering, if you were to decide to try and drill that, do you think it would be possible to drill through the metal and then use a glass drill bit to drill the glass and then swap back to... Um, or am so, I overthinking things are you? <laughs> well, you might be able to. Um, I mean, you know, anything's possible. Um, but uh, the one... I've only managed to get my hands on one, and that was borrowed, which is why it's not here with me today. Um, it didn't matter if you drilled through the copper. I thought you had to drill through the stamps. Beg pardon? I missed your question, sorry. Or the comment. Don't you have to drill through the stamps? Um, yeah, you would um, You would have to either do that or you'd have to drill. You could, uh, you know, you could uh, attack these reasonably well by drilling those two pivot points um, because then actually your, le your lock would deform. Um, All right. So it's, there's a, an, you know, that's another way of doing it. Uh, but yes, essentially, the glass plate was a hardened, um, uh, tempered glass, so I think it would shatter. I mean, I was, I was worried just handling it and moving it around. I think it would shatter very easily. Um, I have one from 1973, and I don't think it has the movable. It's, uh, what can you say about a 73 one? Uh, so a 7310 lever will have will have exact it will have this same mechanism, but where this is a square, um, where this is a little square hole, yours will almost certainly be a little um, slot. Okay, and that little slot uh, allows this thing to move backwards and forwards, um, but it does it does bind, and I think that's um, I think that's why they they changed because the if you think about the precision you need to to get a, a, sl a slot in just the right place such that it doesn't bind um i'm pretty certain that's why they changed to a larger drill i still don't know why it's a square hole in this case
I'm glad you've got one there. That's great. That's awesome. Do you know anything about the serial numbers or how that follows or anything like that? Um, a little bit. So, um, you know, the, let me see, it's a little bit clearer on this one, I think. Yeah. So you've got a couple of, a uh, couple of things. So, um, SSG is the, so this firm or SSG is the company that provides security for, uh, the Ministry of Defence in the UK. Um, your, uh, serial number is the key number. And so if you look at my key here, you'll see the serial number matches the key. And so if you manage, if you find one where that and that don't match, it's been botched together out of old bits. Uh, the code, I believe, is unique to each individual um, lock. And I believe that there is some uh, encoding of the, um, the bit in, in that or some uh, encoding of at least some of the information around the lock such that in theory I think you could ring up um, the DOE and they should be able to tell you what lock and where it's gone and who's got it and when it was last serviced and everything else based on the uh, both the serial number and the and the code but I'm not I'm not 100% oh, sorry big one that's that code there and this one here is the, just the NATO code so anything which is NATO has to go in the you know in the book and you have to be able to look it up by you know you have to be able to order it if you're a NATO organization and so that's that's what that bit there is all about um, yeah I don't think they just give that information out they certainly do not I've been uh, <laughs> trying to find out as much as I can for a while and uh, yes go away is uh, often the often the response The sleeves are indeed very, very, very fragile. Uh, I think that's the reason uh, in the beginning of your talk, you uh, at the back of the keyway in the, on the sleeve, there's this round metal bit. Yeah. I presume that's uh, if you do insert your key, you do it a bit awkwardly. Uh, that metal will strengthen your plastic a bit. I presume this, that's the this one. Uh, this is yeah, just a thin, one. yeah. This is just a very. Th this is uh, just a thin plate. So my, uh, I, my suspicion is that, yeah, I suppose it could do. It might be partly to anti wear on the plastic. Um, Have you tried to test it with a magnet? Ninety. I'm pretty sure it's steel. Because um, it might it actually. Uh, there are some lead plates in it, so it might. It might be this lead with steel in. Or is this it is just not, steel? This is not lead, this is steel. It's about um, one and a half mil thick. Okay. Uh, the t the lead plate is that one there that you can see, um, which has got that, as I, say, as I showed, that fantastic relieved um, section. Uh, so the, re the, the relieving on the... Take this down thing apart. So the relieving on the lead there um, lines up with the... Uh, sorry, it would be that way around lines up with the bitting so it's a really nice way of, of helping to disguise the uh the bitting of the lock i kind of like that so i'm probably my favorite thing about it so unnecessary unfortunately they didn't uh they didn't actually um stop uh very good against um what's it called Un ultrasound is that it oh, maybe so. i've i've never tried to ul ultrasound any of these um yeah, that's that. That would be an interesting, interesting attack. I think it's very difficult. Um, you know, this this is mounted quite a long way away from the the surface. There's several levels layers of steel. Uh, this thing's mounted on rubber, and then there's so, uh, the glass. I'm not expert. But I think what you do is that you have a little probe, um, and that has some gel on it, and you touch the individual levers, and they will actually give a different. Feedback of some kind. I'm no expert, depending on where the gate is, and nice. you can. That makes sense. But that's just what I've heard. Uh, apparently, those tools are very hard to come by, and they're very expensive. With a bit of luck, somebody will weigh in and say, "I've got one," and, and show us what it, show it to us. I have a, mine has a MR 
98295 code on the lock and the key. Do you have a, know anything about what the bidding is in relation to what the lock codes are? MR298295? Yes, sir. Um, no, I don't, but the R is interesting. And I'm trying to remember the, where I've seen that before. Um, yours is a 14 lever, is it, or is it 10? It was a 10, yeah. That's very interesting. 73. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm afraid. Uh, okay. No, I don't know. I, don't, the, um, I haven't yet worked out how to get from, from the uh, numbering on here to the bitting and whether, in fact, it, it, that is possible. Um, I'm sure it's I, I'll, code. I'll, I'll let you know one day. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I was going to. Do? I ought to show you. This is my my tension tool, I suppose. I just spotted. I've got the one of the original bits. So this is just a Yale key that's that's cut down. That's all I'm using. This is from a cheap three lever, I think, or five lever Yale. Um, so I've just got I've got loads and loads of these keys kicking around. Um, the good thing about these ones is they're steel. Um, you'll need to cut it down, obviously. And then you need to cut it down further than you think because <clears throat> trying to get a picking wire and your key in there is, is pretty difficult. And so this little turret um, is, is quite hard to, to do that. The, oh, um, incidentally, I know that there was definitely a drilling attack. So uh, if I go back to my little uh, collection here, those round ones you see, used to be mounted in the same way with glass behind them um and uh they you know that uh, one of the attacks which i believe happened um was that uh, you could go in with a quite a large drill and obviously just take out that whole circular section and so that was, that was a real weak spot and you'd go straight through straight through the glass ignore everything else and uh you know, just rip the guts of it out so destructive attack but still um still quite i don't know relatively easy because you're bypassing a lot of the secondary um, and tertiary security features and so that was why that's what drove the change to this much more um restricted uh kind of key shroud i guess so i have a question actually um that uh plastic case uh, that you have there yep uh, I keep doing this. I, I feel like it's a very bad idea, actually, from what I've done uh, with um, how they made it so that you can't take the case off un unless you have the key, uh, because those cases are the same on everyone, aren't they? Uh, they yes, they are, but um, so, so you can just snap it off and then replace the case. Uh, you can you well sort of. The only thing holding this case on is that lug interacting with the bolt. So I suppose arguably you could glue, you could rip this off, uh, glue another one in, and, and and those kind of things. But it would still be, I think, difficult to produce. Um, you know, difficult to to interfere with it. I mean, and given the fact that these things, you know, if they were being installed, would be travelling with several uh, members of the security um, service and, and all those kind of things, you know, you're really, the fact that you have to use the key to unlock it is, is a really neat thing, but it's it's a hell of a long way down the redundancy la uh, ladder. How did you get to uh, come by the, uh, I, I, you mentioned that you, you heard it was impeccable, but when did you first hear, hear about the NATO Mercy? When I first hear it existed, um, I, I don't know, I think it was probably in conversation, it was either in conversation with Michael Maynard, um, talking about uh, you know, challenges and, and interesting things, or I might have been searching around, uh, look at, you know, looking online for, for kind of what's the great, what's the best lock or any of that sort of stuff, and it just hadn't been publicly picked and that's the thing that we need to be really clear about here there have been obviously people picking these things for years doing them in various different ways i've spoken to several safe technicians who i 
utterly believe have been opening these opening these things since the mid 70s um and uh you know so th yeah if it's got a key you can open it right and th this is just quite challenging uh and i think it's enough of a challenge and it's an interesting enough thing that i'm quite happy to publish publicize it and say hey look here's a really cool thing guys and uh, go and go and have a play you know crack have a crack at it i think if you you know if you're having a go and you disable the this blocking mechanism it's actually pretty pretty easy it's basically like one and a half five lever locks it's only trying to beat this and um my principal way of doing that is by having a really precise careful tension control and so what i'm really doing a lot of the time is uh, i'm riding the point where this thing is not quite pushed down enough to block the um uh, to block the bolt there's a tiny bit of play and if you can see it there, there's a little bit of play so you've got basically that much tension to play with and then if you push the bolt one way or the other that gives you a tiny bit more movement to play with um, and so really that's that's the difficult bit i think so uh, for my luck actually and i did some tests on this uh, it is impossible to do what you're describing there and of course these are all locks so they're all different um I, I, so I, I had really... to return to the glue thing um mm. but uh, would you would you it does safe technicians do they do what you're doing no no uh no there's well i'm aware of one person that, that has and they're much better picker than i am um by a long way i mean most folk are really but um uh no i think so I've said I've referred to pin and cam quite a few times because that's one of the ways that I know is, uh, I know that tool has been developed and um, and that was quite a long time ago and that essentially is uh, you build you build like a kind of slightly false you, know, you attempt to build a, uh, an alternative or you attempt to build a key that kind of works you pop that key in that, that key is made up of little rods and you have a cam underneath and so you can you that cam extends the rods or shortens them a little bit and so you can try and manipulate the um the levers into their gates by using that and it allows you to decode the lock in reasonably short order compared to learning compared to picking it so that's Wait, can, can you repeat uh, uh i'm not following over yeah um uh, I really don't have time to talk about how to explain how the pin and cam works, but pin okay, and cam. No, no, it's I. I would love to, but I don't want to tread on the toes of the next person. Um, but I would really love to. I'd quite happy to hop over in one of the others. But essentially, you have a makeup key, and that makeup key has a hollow um, shaft and a mechanism to push the, the, your makeup pins further in or further or allow them to come out again yeah it's the cassette design right with the off-centric yeah. shaft that you turn yeah yeah and so by by doing that you can get this thing to you know you can move this a little bit and so you can tell if you're in a false gate or if you're in a true gate um and so you can just keep changing the lengths of the pins uh one at a time and you can do that uh it's possible to impression these things using um, kind of soft impressioning techniques rather than uh, just taking a key and looking for markings. Uh, and I've heard various other ways of getting in as well. So like everything else, you can you can get into everything. Um, these things had such a reputation. That, that was what got me into investigating them. And I'm really pleased to kind of now be trying to get other people into them. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope that's uh, all right. Well, thanks. An excellent presentation. Yeah, that was really cool. I liked the that was fun. Yes, lock, and I didn't really know as much about it.